you notice that in the question or in the in the little summary underneath the diagram they said that OPR is 24. So that is P1. Alright, so P1 was given in the written part but not actually on the picture. And if you didn't have that then you couldn't really do anything. Alright, so just make sure that you read through all of that. So for this one, they just wanted the sizes of those angles. Sometimes you have to do multiple steps, yes? Yeah, this one is the problem, but I think it's like that. Okay, so here, if P1 is 24, they asked you for R1, do we see that Z shape there? Okay, alternate angles, R1 will be equal to 24 as well, because those lines are parallel. For 4.2, they then asked you for R2. Okay, so now we have R1. They want R2. Guys, SQ or QS is a diameter, right? And we know that a diameter subtends a 90 degree angle at the circumference. So the whole of angle R was 90 degrees, right? Or I wrote QRS is 90 because of angle and semicircle. Therefore, R2 is going to be 90 minus r1 which is 24 which we found in the previous question and then it's 66. <clears throat> now guys you didn't have to write this step down separately you could have just said r2 equals 90 minus 24 or you actually could have just had r2 equals 66 but then you have to put angle in semicircle as the reason because that's how you got the whole 90 degree angle there eh? Okay, so now we have that, that, and that. Next question they asked us for O2, which we can clearly see is the angle at the center. So it has to be double R2, double the one at the circumference. So 66 times two is 132 degrees. Okay, angle at center equals two times angle at circumference. So now we have that 132. Now they're asking us for P2. Now we know that this is an isosceles triangle, right? Because those two are radii. And we've done this quite a few times now. To do that calculation, you say 180 minus the one angle that you have, all right? And that will be the sum of those two. But because they are equal, we can then just divide that by two. And the answer is 24. Remember, you have to have all three reasons in the, those brackets. So it's angle, sum, and triangle. Yesterday, I discussed this with the other group. You don't have to name the triangle in your reason. It is just sometimes useful for you when you're doing it so that you can keep track of where you're working. But you can just write angle, sum, and triangle. That's fine. Then angles opposite equal sides and then radii. <clears throat> okay, those three reasons. Next question was they wanted angle S. Now, guys, we should notice that S is subtended by QR, right? Angle S. And then also the whole of angle P is subtended by that same chord. And the whole of angle P is 48, right? 24 plus 24. So S is going to be equal to P, 48, because of angles in same segment. <clears throat> then for the last question, they wanted Q2, which is this angle over here. And I just thought that I would just use angle sum in triangle if we're looking at QRS. Okay, because that's one angle of the triangle. We have the 48 degree angle there and we have this angle. So we can just subtract from 180. Yes? Um, so you have to specify triangle QRS. Yeah. So the angle sum in triangle. And so we just um, so we can... <laughs> okay, are we fine with that, guys? Number four. All right, now I was going to start tangents today, but I don't want to rush through it. Um, and I actually want you guys to practice some more of these before we move on to tangents because then it's everything mixed together. Okay, so tangents, I will be starting with the other group tomorrow. I just actually 
forgot to copy the notes for you guys. So I'm going to give you work to do and then just go and make copies for you quickly so that you have the notes tomorrow when you're actually watching the video at home, at least. And it will be a bit easier to follow. All right, so from the revision exercise, I want you please to do numbers one and three. Number one, because we haven't really worked with the first two theorems all that much, all right? The line from center perpendicular to chord, line from center to midpoint of chord, those two theorems. I want you guys to practice those. Okay, so that comes in in number one. And then number three is just a four mark question where you have to find X in a circle. Okay, so you can get your books out. If you don't have your book here, then you'll just have to take a picture maybe of someone else's <clears throat> or you can borrow mine. All right, but from the same exercise revision, these two questions are on page 211, 211, numbers one and three. Okay, so I'm working guys, I'm gonna run to the staff room quickly to make those copies. 